Hello, welcome to our course on Introduction to Dynamical Models in Biology. This is week 1 and this is module 1. Here we will have general discussions on modeling in biology, specifically dynamical models in biology. As a biology student, you must be aware that once upon a time, biology used to be just like stargazing. You can look at a star, you can observe its motion, but you cannot actually change its position and do experiment on a star. Biology used to be like that once upon a time. You can observe a bird, you can observe a flower, you can measure the size of a lizard tail, you can note them down, but you cannot actually change, manipulate that biological form, life form. But biology has graduated from that observation based science and now we can actually decide what type of experiment we will do based on our hypothesis, based on our requirement we do inter interfere with the system, you inject a drug in an animal and then study how its blood pressure is changing. If required, we genetically modify a bacteria, introduce a new gene in that to see what will be the effect of that gene on the bacterial metabolism or bacterial survival. You create a whole new organism, a transgenic mouse to do your study to understand the effect of a gene on a physiology or development of mouse. These are very common. And we have graduated from the days of measuring tail length and the color of flower. Now we have a diverse type of data. You have genomic data, sequences of genes, mRNA sequence, genomic sequence, sequences of microRNAs. You have large amount of proteomic data which tells about which protein is expressed in how much amount in different types of cells in human body. We have data on structure of proteins. We have network maps showing interaction between different molecules. So we have huge amount of data now in hand. And every day, thousands of scientists are generating different forms of data in different biological systems. This observation is key in understanding how life works. And that's how we have made progress, tremendous progress rather, in understanding living systems. But sometimes, these data also are observations or experimental observation rather, has some limitations and that's where the mathematical models come into play. For example, suppose you have treated some cells with a drug and you are doing a dose dependent experiment. You are treating your cells with different doses of the drug. You observe that a particular phenomena happen only when you are using a higher amount of the drug. So through experiment you have seen the phenomena. You may measure change in certain molecules as you are treating the drug, uh, cells with the drug and you may have seen that that also has a dose dependent behavior. Now the question comes then why do we have a dose dependent behavior? Your experimental observation many a time may not give you a clear clue. Rather you can make multiple hypotheses, create mathematical models for them and then test those model using models and identify which hypothesis is correct and then go back and design an experiment to check whether what your mathematical model is tell telling is correct or not. So in essence, I can have limitations of my experiment where my experiments cannot give a clear physical explanation of a phenomena. But take another case. In that case, you actually cannot design an experiment. For example, I am studying, suppose, the evolution of a gene P53, which is present in human. So I want to know the step by step how P53 gene has evolved. I can know the sequence of P53 right now in different organisms. But the sequence of P53 in those organisms which are our ancestors and already disappeared from art, I have no option to know those sequences. So I cannot design an experiment to know what was the sequence of P53 in those organisms. We all know that we draw a phylogenetic tree to understand the evolution of sequences, nucleotides and amino acid sequences. In those cases, to understand the ancestor and the evolutionary process of that gene, 
you cannot actually do an experiment. In some cases, you can do experiment and actually you are doing experiments, but the amount of data generated is huge. For example, you are doing genome scale study, you are doing proteome scale study, you are screening drugs using proteomics and genomics tools. You are generating a huge amount of data and to distill out of that data and understand that data intuitively is very difficult for a human being. In this case also, building a mathematical model may help you to distill out the observation and to create new hypotheses or make new predictions. So in essence, as I have said here, written down here, here is that mathematical models are nothing but complementation to your experimental observation. They may help you to give physical explanation to phenomena. A mathematical model may help you to make predictions. And most of the time, a mathematical model helps you to create a new hypothesis that you can go back in your bench and test by experiments. Now, let us look into how mathematical model fits into as a whole the scientific endeavor that we are in. So, in general, the science has a cycle. It starts with the experiment. You design a particular experiment in an ideal condition. For example, you grow cells in a plate and then treat them with a particular drug. That's your experiment. From this experiment, you measure some observable. And then, using that observed behavior, you create a hypothesis. Now, once you have created the hypothesis, you go back again to the experiment, design a new experiment to test this hypothesis. This cycle from experiment to hypothesis, experiment to hypothesis, keep on happening. And eventually, what we get, eventually, we get knowledge about the system. So this is a cyclic process of scientific endeavor. Mathematical model fits just there. As I said, in some cases, experimental observation may not be good enough to understand the phenomena. Or they may be so, so huge that you cannot actually intuitively understand the implication of that and make a meaning out of it or distill out the essence of that observation. So what you have? You have done an experiment. Based on the observation and the physical principles that involve you understand, you create a mathematical model. That mathematical model helps you to make new hypothesis. And from this hypothesis, again you go back to your experiments. So this cycle goes on with experiment, mathematical model, hypothesis building, and again experiments. And in this way, we develop new knowledge. So essentially what I want to say is that mathematical models are actually complement to your experiment. And honestly speaking, mathematical models are not new to you. Very frequently, structures of proteins are predicted by mathematical modeling, what you call usually homology modeling per se. You have a sequence of, amino acid, of a gene, amino acid sequence of a gene, you want to know what type of function it may have, what type of molecule is it, what type of biological function it is related to. As we know, function of a protein depends upon structure. So what you do, you try to understand the structure of the protein. But if you do not know the real structure of the protein, you create a model of that using some mathematical construct. And you get a 3D model of the protein. From that, you try to understand what may be the function of the protein. Or you may have no, the, done experiment to understand the function, you know what is the function of it, you go back to this 3D model and try to explain that function using the 3D structure. And this is very common in biology. Another type of model is very common in biology that I mentioned a few slides back is phylogenetic tree. You know the sequence of certain genes right now. You want to know how they have evolved, how they are connected to each other. So you build a mathematical model, what you, which you call phylogenetic tree, to understand the evolution of this gene. These type of models are very common in biology. There is another type of model that is focus of our course, that is dynamical model. No living system is static. Anything living has processes which are changing with time, which are, evolved, are dynamic. Take the example growth of a human being growth of a bacteria in a fermenter or growth of a solid tumor in a patient. 
or maybe the dynamics between predator and prey in a jungle. All these are dynamical systems. Things are changing with time. Take the issue of pattern formation on zebra or the pattern formation during evolution, uh, sorry, the, the development of embryo that is changing with time. You can have oscillation in your sleep cycle. You can have oscillation in secretion of in insulin in your body. That's also a dynamic process. If you disturb that oscillatory process, your metabolism will get disturbed. If you look into the cellular level, protein production, transcription, gene regulation, gene expression and its regulation are all dynamic processes. They are changing with time. Talk about signal transaction, calcium signaling, signaling by the phosphorylase system. These are all dynamic processes. So most of the biological processes from cellular molecular level to population level are actually dynamical processes. And the focus of our course is how to model these dynamical processes. So we will focus on building model for dynamical processes or systems in biology. And the most interesting thing is that the mathematical formulation, the mathematical techniques that we will use will be same whether you are using it for a molecular level problem or you are dealing with a population level problem. For example, the dynamics in predator and prey in a forest. The techniques and the methods that we will use will be same. Before we go further and discuss about it, let us understand one key issue, key concept here. In this course, we will build mathematical model for dynamical processes or dynamical models for different biological systems. So we will build models and we have to keep in mind that models are not reality. Let me give you an example. I want to understand the flight of a plane. I am designing a new plane or suppose we do not know how plane fly, we want to understand that. I can create a paper plane. That paper plane is a model for a real plane. Obviously, you understand this paper plane is not a real plane. But using this paper plane, if I fly it, I can understand certain behavior of flight. I can understand how the shape of the plane affects, affects its flight. I can understand the basic phenomena of floating in air, basic phenomena of flying in air. But obviously, using this paper plane, you may not ask complicated question like what will happen if there is rain, how navigation system will be there, all these complicated question you may not answer using this paper plane. So paper plane is a model of a real plane. So it is not exactly same of the real plane. It is just a model. It is not reality. And paper plane can help you to understand only certain unknown things. It cannot tell you or cannot answer you all question about flight of a plane, real plane. So all models are like that. All mathematical models, whether for a dynamic system or not, that we will build are actually a replica, not an exact replica or a reduced replica of a real phenomena that you are dealing with. And it can only answer only few questions, certain specific question that we can ask. That we have to keep in mind when we are building models. Now the next question comes, then what is mathematical models? Mathematical models are actually nothing but a set of mathematical construct. By mathematical construct I mean it may be a set of equations. For example, in the course you will learn how to write ordinary differential equations, set of ordinary differential equations which will create our model. So a model, mathematical model is nothing but a set of mathematical construct which can be equations, relations like that. And these equations or relation or mathematical constructs are based on certain physical principle that we believe are playing behind the phenomena that I am studying and based on my observation which are coming from the experiments. So based on your observation and the physical processes, the physical laws that we know for nature, we build certain mathematical equations and relationship. That is our mathematical model. So suppose you want to model the dynamics of P53 in a cell. When you apply ionizing radiation on cell, there will be DNA damage 
and the cell will produce p53 to increase the amount of active p53 and it has been observed that the the concentration of p53 oscillates with time so i want to understand this behavior so i will write down certain equations representing this oscillation and those equations will be based on my observation for p53 uh, uh, oscillation of p53 and the physical phenomena processes that is going behind this oscillation as i understand as a whole i will write down some equations or mathematical construct this is my model now i will ask these questions to this model that means i will analyze this model or sometime i will simulate i'll use a computer to simulate the behavior of this model using those equation so that will be simulation so this analysis of simulation of the mathematical model will give answer to my questions so mathematical modeling for example dynamical modeling in biology will have two part first part will be to write a right model write a correct uh, sets of equations or mathematical construct as we believe will represent the process and then you analyze them using different techniques some will be using symbolic math using paper and pen sometime you will use computer to simulate and analyze that model and that will give you answer to your question that will make prediction what will happen if you do a particular experiment that will help you to create new hypothesis which you can go back and check by experiments so if i jot down mathematical models as i have said is very common in biology they come in different forms and we have to remember the mathematical models are actually complementary to experimental observation they comes in hands in hand and as i have shown from observation of experiments you create a mathematical model that helps you to create a hypothesis again you go back to experiment using this cycle we get knowledge and mathematics in our course of math modeling will focus on dynamical systems and or rather will create mathematical model to understand the dynamics of different processes and as i have said models are nothing but a set of mathematical relations equations we analyze them to understand the behavior of the system the phenomena we analyze them or simulate them to understand what will happen if we do a particular type of experiment that is prediction using this model by anal analyzing this model we try to make generate some new hypothesis which we can go back and check by experiments the this is the theme of the whole course initially we'll try to learn the basics of building mathematical models how to write down those equations then we will learn how to analyze them and then step by step we'll try to build different aspects of mathematical modeling for dynamical systems in biology thank you for listening see you in the next module